my name is Daniel Catala. I'm coming to you from San Francisco, California. And today I'd like to talk to you about what you see to my left, right over here. This is a self-feeding, self-watering pot. I think you should know about this and see what the advantages are. It's not a new idea. It's the combination of two existing ideas. Uh, through some schematics, I'll show you what's happening on the inside, and then we're going to build one together. Okay? So let's get to it. Today's design is going to incorporate two techniques that I've seen used separately, self-watering and self-feeding. Self-watering refers to using two chambers, an upper and a lower chamber, where the upper chamber has a soil in the plants and the lower chamber is a water reservoir. If you buy two identical containers at a store, so let's suppose that these are two buckets or two totes, when you, when you nest them and put them together, you'll notice that the water reservoir available is very small. So one improvement I wanted to introduce was to add an object to the bottom container so that the water storage would vastly increase. With reference to the self-feeding, what I noticed through some research on the internet is that people were using large PVC tubes like this. They were drilling many holes, making Swiss cheese out of the bottom part. This goes into the soil where earthworms have access in and out through the holes that were made. And then food is added through the top. The advantage of this is that nutrition is distributed by the earthworms close by to any plants that are nearby the tube that has been implanted. So the question for me was, how can I bring these two techniques that I've seen used separately together in a container type setting? So let's have a look. The first component to the design is the lower tote. So let's draw that in here. As we discussed, we're going to introduce an object that raises the uh, height of the second tote and what, what I find is going to work is two milk crates. They're made out of plastic, they're very strong. I'm going to put one here and we're going to put one there. This allows the second tote to sit much higher up, like so. Now, uh, remember that the uh, top portion is going to contain the soil. So, this here is filled with soil. We want water to be able to flow downwards when in excess and flow upwards also. So we're going to introduce two drains, one here and one there. The drains look like uh, plastic baskets. So here's basket one and basket two. Because this is so deep, we're going to need to add wicks. And wicks are just pieces of cloth that allow to suck up moisture. So here come the wicks. The other thing I wanted this container to do is to be able to receive compost or food. So we're going to put a large PVC tube and we're going to align it with one of the drains. Remember that this tube will be perforated. It will have many holes that allow earthworms to come in and out. And through the top is where we put food scraps. So the first time I water this, the water is going to go through and fill the lower chamber. As food is added, water will go down, but also sideways, because the flow won't be as fast. As you add food scraps through the top, you're going to attract earthworms. They will come in and out, distributing the castings to the plants that are growing just beside it. So here we'll have a nice, strong plant that has constant access to water and constant access to food. If we have a very large rain event, the lower chamber will fill up and the excess water will overflow, will, sorry, overflow where the two pots meet. So we have a safety built in. Let's go outside and see what physical objects this diagram refers to. To assemble this pot, we're going to use basically seven pieces of plastic. There's these two totes, each one is 37 gallons. We have uh, two milk crates used to file things. I have a two foot long, six inch piece of PVC. And then I have these two drainage baskets right here. And I just want to point out that the drainage basket fits perfectly into the tube. This will become important later. Uh, 
we're first going to start working with the top tote. This is the one that goes on top. And what it needs is two drainage holes for these baskets. Uh, as far as where to put those holes, I noticed that there are a couple of ridges in the plastic right here. So if you make the hole too close to the edge, the basket uh, will not sit flush and the silicone cannot make a seal. So I'm just working with the center area. That means that I'm going to locate one basket here and the other over there. I found an object and I measured it to see if it had the same circumference as the hole I need to make. And it's pretty close. So I'm going to use this as a template. And all I do is I place it where I want the hole to be. And then with a marker, I can uh, draw the outline. The next step will be to use a drill to mark out the perimeter of the circle. And then we're going to cut out this hole and the second one over there. One reason to use the drill and make this pattern is that the plastic is very soft and as you pull the knife along, the holes will trap the knife and not let it go outside the boundary. If those holes weren't there, you could easily cut a hole that's too big. do a fit test so I'm grabbing one of the drains and uh, yeah I'm happy with that we have good contact next thing we're gonna do is uh, use a dab of silicone to get a good seal the purpose of these drains is to let excess water through but we also need a way for the water to come back up that's why we're gonna add some wicks I have these old kitchen towels and what I'm doing is finding some long ones and then weaving it in and out through these openings so that I get this. Gravity will take water down, capillarity will take water back up. Uh, we have the added issue that soil could go through here and uh, go into the lower tote. To prevent that, I'm putting a kitchen towel through the middle right like that. Once these are in place, we're gonna put one final barrier like so and put a nice rubber band to secure it we can start assembling the bottom tote. We start with the lid and we invert it. This will be our base. After this is in place, we're gonna put the bottom tote in. This, remember, has no holes. Finally, the last components are these uh, milk crates that are gonna act as uh, uh, razors. And the distance from here to there is the amount of water that can be stored. I noticed that if I put in one and then the other, it would not fit. But if I put both together and gently wiggle, I can get them to stay there. The two drains will sit in these hollow spaces. Well, at the point where we can add our drain, notice it has two wicks hanging from it. I'm adding a, a, a dab of silicone along the sides and also to the surface upon which it will adhere. It's easier, much easier to add the wicks before you glue this. So in goes the basket, and I'm gonna wiggle it just a little bit to get good contact. Notice there's a, um, an extra kitchen towel in here to prevent uh, uh, soil and food scraps from falling in there. We are gonna cover this uh, second basket but we're gonna leave this other one open and I'll show you why in a moment. Uh, this is the one that's gonna receive the watering and feeding tube. Uh, however, we need to do something to the tube before it goes in, okay? And it's basically drilling holes so that the earthworms can come and go and so that can water can seep out and distribute. Here's the watering slash feeding tube and what we're gonna do is one foot above ground we're going to leave as is. The bottom foot we're going to drill holes in. 
and I've marked every two inches uh, little reference points. First I'm going to have some uh, uh, pilot holes with this size bit. The, the final bit I'm going to use is half an inch and here's the spade blade that I'll be using. Looks like the North Pole here with all the PVC snow that we have. Um, the drill left some sharp barbs and I was trying to remove them with a cutter and it's taking a long time. So I found a better tool, it's this uh, Japanese sickle. So I just run it along this way as if you were shaving almost. And it really clears off all the sharp barbs pretty neatly. The tube has been perforated with a half inch holes and is ready to go in. So we slide it on top of the basket right there. And what I like to put at the bottom is wood chips. Just so that uh, we have a good separation between soil above and water below in the second tub. I'm going to add enough so that I completely cover the second drain over there. I can spread them around a little bit. I think I want a little bit more. But after these wood chips, we're going to start with the soil. And then as you add it, you do want to wet it down. If you keep it dry, then you get settlement where it all comes down the next day. So this is good enough right there with the wood chips. Now we're going to start with the soil. Spread that around. And then, as just described, we're going to give it a watering as we go. So I'm going to keep on doing this, adding more soil and watering, and I'll be back with you when we're at the top level, okay? I've topped off the container with soil, and I selected a couple of uh, plantings to put in there. These I grow indoors under a lamp, and I use a paper pot. So the nice thing about these is that once you've chosen where to put them, you just make a little hollow, you can drop them in there with paper and all, and they're ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and plant this out, put some mulch on top, and then we're going to talk about this baby and how to feed through it and how to water through it. All the plants are in. I had some plants that weren't doing too well in a different pot, so I'm going to give them a second chance here. Um, we have some kale. Uh, this is a, a purple string bean called Triunfo Violetto and I put it together with the peas over there so that it can trellis upwards. Um, the uh, shorter plants on the front, the tall at the back. As far as feeding it, I have things on this side that are from the kitchen, from this side from the garden. But before I do that, let's put in some wood chips at the very bottom because I want to make sure that barrier is still in place that's going to keep uh, the soil out of it. So if you look down there, you can see the holes and the kitchen rag. We're going to add a couple of handfuls of wood chips at this point. Yep. And next we're going to put in the kitchen scraps. So I have banana peels, I have some of those strawberries that sit at the bottom of the container and get all mushy. And I got a sandwich that was given to me two days ago. I, didn't, I wasn't able to eat it. You know, some people blend the food for their worms. I just give it whole. They have nothing else to do all day. They'll figure it out. Um, and then uh, to top it off, I'm going to go with some of these clippings just to keep the fruit flies out. Okay, so that's a good beginning. We have uh, fed uh, through this tube. The next part is going to be uh, adding some water. I like the fact that there's a, a, a wide 
bore on the pipe so it's easy to water. If it gets clogged with food for some reason, I can always water sideways, but for now I'm gonna do it this way. Thank you for joining me today. I had a lot of fun putting this together. I hope there's some ideas that will be helpful to you. Until next time.